there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. We are rolling. It is Sat Chat time. How are you doing? How is your week? I hope you're doing well. Um, welcome. Welcome to our happy, crafty corner of the internet. And um, we'll catch you up with what's been going on this week. Um, kind of in a funk, kind of not feeling all that, uh, all that creative, kind of feeling out of practice. Um, so last week I had talked about the weather being great. The weather's been really nice. And I did end up going out on the pond after we talked. And um, what I did was I brought the paddle board and the kayaks and my daughter Lila and one of her friends, we went to the pond and um, I brought my painting kit. More on that in a second. Um, and I used the paddle board. It was very windy. It wasn't windy on like dry land, but as soon as you got out in the water, it was very windy. And I was paddling and uh, oh my gosh, I'm so out of shape. My arms, my arms were killing me. I was so tired. I'd gotten like, and I'd stop for a minute and then the, the like wind would blow me in the opposite direction of where I wanted to go. So it was a very, <laughs> a very, uh, a very enlightening uh, time on the water. I was like, wow, I had to sit down and paddle on my paddleboard because the wind resistance of standing up was way too much. But I did, I did, uh, I'm still putting my, uh, my button, my jeans on every day or my shorts that don't have stretch in them to make sure that, uh, that they still fit with, you know, bread again, bread, <laughs> bread again, I don't know what to call it, bread, uh, with, with all the bread, with all the bread, let's just say with all of the bread. Um, so I've kept you up on the bread saga over the past, uh, couple of months and I'm still making bread and I got, I, I, the unicorn, I found the unicorn at the grocery store this week. I, uh, saw a bag of whole wheat flour. I haven't seen any whole wheat flour since the pandemic began. So I grabbed it and um, I fed my sourdough starter with the whole wheat, the whole wheat flour, and it loved it. It was like, whew, it was like crazy. Within a couple hours, it was more than double. Um, so I wanted to make some whole wheat sourdough bread, but I decided to do half and half because it seems like that was a, kind of a recommended recipe. And I was making a salad yesterday, and it was one of those really awesome salads where you got the lettuce and you got the cucumbers and the tomatoes and the avocado and um, what else did I, did I have? Oh, like cranberries, dried cranberries, um, carrots, you know you know, all the good salad stuff. And um, so I put some chickpeas in there for some extra protein and fiber. And I remember hearing that you can use the chickpea juice instead of um, eggs and other things for like a binder. And you can even like whip it up and make like whipped cream or macaroons and stuff like that. But you know, that's a little advanced. But I thought, what if I use that in my bread, especially with whole wheat, I bet that would make it um, like hold together a little bit better because I've always noticed whenever I've used whole wheat that it gets all crumbly and uh, dry. And so I add some, I add like half of the chickpea juice from one can of chickpeas into my dough. I just reduced the, uh, actually I added a little bit more flour. You could re reduce the water, add a little more flour, whatever. You know, you got to get that right, the right consistency. I don't measure anything when I make bread. I did the first couple loaves of sourdough just to make sure because I'd never done a high hydration uh, loaf before. And, uh, but now I just throw it in, I mix it up, call it a day, it works out great. Um, it was really good, not dry at all, very chewy, had a great texture, and when you cut it, it wasn't really crumbly. So I'm like, well, that's great. So if you're using chickpeas in your salads and whatnot, anyway, save the juice, put some in your bread, it's awesome. Um, so <laughs> I was explaining this to my husband, who was so sick of hearing about sourdough. He goes, he goes, Lindsay, you could do a TED Talk on bread, he goes, or a bread talk. And I'm like, that's funny. That material is going in the sat chat. And he came up with sat chat as well. So it's comedy all the time around here. I I, sh I should get him on the show. I should get him on the sat chat. He should co-host it. That would be funny. Maybe, I don't know. He'd probably be like, why do you have this thing? Why, what are these supplies? He'd probably be very bored. <laughs> He'd be like, you know, staring off into the distance. I don't have a window to stare out of down here. So I don't know. Oh, so anyway, on the kayak uh, or the paddleboard, I thought it would be fun to share with you what I take when I'm outdoor painting because I did bring this with me um, and I quickly realized there wasn't going to be any painting going on because even if I used a kayak, I would be blown across town, <laughs> you know, if I sat still and did paddle. But um, I thought I would share with you. So what I do is I just put my stuff in a plastic bag. I do have a larger backpack I bring if I'm hiking, um, but in the kayak, I, I don't want very much stuff. I just want the bare minimum. And here's what I have. Uh, it's actually the, the topic in Petite Club this month for June. If you're a member, you've probably seen that video. Um, if not, if you want to join, I'll put a link down below. Uh, but anyway, um, and I have something else to talk to. Yeah, I have a new tutorial up, that one there. We'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, um, so in my, in my, um, 
in my bag, I have my little sketchbook, and I actually did a painting today that, uh, not today, this week that I really liked, because I was kind of in a funk, and I was just feeling like, man, I need to practice. I don't feel like I'm, uh, I didn't feel like I was, like, growing or progressing. I feel like I was just kind of, like, you know, treading water, standing still, not, like, making any progress. Because when you're doing videos, um, uh, you know, you're, you're teaching on YouTube, you're teaching in classes, a lot of times you're just, you want to take a safe route because you want to get it done in one take. Um, I've been limited to when I can film, when it's going to be quiet. Uh, and so I tend to like kind of do a safe thing, something I knew I could do in 20 minutes and I wouldn't be hemming and hawing, I wouldn't be wasting your time. By the way, full disclosure, this is going to be a rambly chatty chat and I would highly suggest you find something productive to do while I'm chatting if you want to listen because I, otherwise, you know, it's going to be 20 minutes and you'll be like, I just sat here for 20 minutes and listened to this chick rant and talk and all that stuff. But uh, but anyway, um, I felt like I just needed to do something a little more productive and I was walking the dog earlier this week and I saw a turkey feather um, on the ground in the woods so I picked it up and I brought it home and I sat outside and I painted this turkey feather in my travel book and the nice thing about having a little travel set is if you want to go paint on your porch if you want to go sit in the backyard if you want to keep it in your car and like pull over at a park somewhere and paint you have that and it's simple and you know you don't have too many choices to make when you sit down to draw because you have a couple things and that is it and you've got to make it work or do without so it really limits the amount of choices and gets you you get down to business you get down to the drawing you get down to making art without the hemming and hawing and the distractions that you have when you're in your studio and you have all these different things to you to use really like how that came out there's a photo of this on Instagram if you want to see I don't have a tutorial like I said I was painting outdoors but then I thought oh I'll show you this painting I'll show you what I what I bring uh, so I have a little um, portable painter this is a palette that I really like I'll try to remember to link all this stuff down below um, you can find it on Amazon I think it's a little on the pricey side honestly for a little plastic palette I think it's around 25 bucks but um, but I, once I got this, like, three or four years ago, it's all I've been using for travel painting. So it's got, it's in a little, a little container. It's the same, the same size as, like, a Cotman Sketcher box. It's got this clasp on it. You pull this off, and the case actually is your water compartments. So you slide those on each end, and it can stand like that on a table or on the ground, on your picnic basket, picnic picnic blanket, not your basket. That would get tipped over and ruin your food. Um, you got your colors, you've got two mixing areas, and it comes with a double-ended brush. So you actually can just use what's there. But I actually sawed off a couple brushes that I had, and um, they were just cheapy synthetics. Um, I sawed them off so they'd be small uh, and short and just sanded the end so they wouldn't be scratchy. And I actually ru ran the uh, bristles on some sandpaper to make them more absorbent. So it kind of flagged the ends. I have a tutorial on that from a couple years ago on my YouTube channel. Um, I will try, just just search DIY travel brush and I'll try to find the link, but I forgetful these days. Uh, in, case I, in case I forget, you can find it. But um, I keep those. I have a white and a black pen and a white color pencil. Um, the neat thing about this though is that if you're sitting in like a camp chair or you're sitting in your kayak, this can go over your leg or your knee. You know, you can adjust it or over the edge of like an Adirondack chair. Um, or if you're painting on the beach, you can set that on the sand and you're not going to get sand in your palette, which is um, awesome. Because the palette I took, I took my Sennelier palette to the Bahamas and I got sand all in it. And uh, I'm telling you, this is the first world problem right here. Uh, it didn't really affect the paint or anything, and it is kind of a nice memory. I'm like, oh, look at that sand um, from a nice trip. Uh, but, you know, you probably don't want to get sand in your palette, and that's a nice way to prevent it. You can also prevent other, you know, debris that could be on the ground if you're setting your palette on the ground and, you know, working that way. So, highly recommend this. I've been using it for years. Um, I just refill it with my tube paints. And I just keep up my, my, my basic colors. Like if you've ever taken one of my classes, you know my basic colors, the six primaries, the, the split primary, then like yellow ochre, burnt sienna, um, sap green. And I also put a cobalt teal and a dioxazine violet uh, in there because that violet's really good for shadows. And the cobalt teal is really nice for seascapes. And I live, um, I don't live on the coast, but I live pretty close to the coast in Maine. And even though we don't get so much of that tropical water, that uh, cobalt teal, that turquoise water, you do get like, swells of it in waves and stuff and it's just real nice to mm, stick that in there such a good color um yeah so i thought i'd share that and i actually bring my water in a flask which totally like horrified my son when he's like mom you got a flask oh my gosh it's like relax it's got water in it and i'm over 21 so even if it didn't big whoop and it's great because it fits right in there nice and compact in the, my baggie in my kayak and um that works great and i can fill up my portable painter i can fill up both sides 
of, uh, of the wells here, about three quarters of the way full, twice with the flask of water. So, um, so that's great. It's plenty of water for that. I don't really like using water brushes that much. I mean, I'll do it in a pinch, but I would definitely, if I had my druthers, I would use regular brushes and dip them in water. I feel like my colors are much fresher. I can paint faster because I can get more water and it's a much more pleasurable experience. And I'm going out to paint for fun. You know, I'm not, it's not like being an accountant. I'm not going out to paint for, you know, uh, for serious work. I'm going out there for enjoyment, for, for fun. So I want it to be fun. I want to, I want to enjoy it. And not that I don't enjoy using a water brush, but it's just not my favorite. And that's what I prefer. Um, so also feeling in the, I'm out of practice, uh, scheme. I did a video on Wednesday and I painted a portrait of my dog, very loose, just a loose watercolor portrait. And I experimented with putting the photo on the screen while I was going. And I got some great feedback from you guys that that was really helpful. So I'm going to try to do that for more videos. So, um, so you can kind of see, especially, I know a lot of you guys watch on your smart TVs and if you're trying to paint along and you've got the smart TV and I'm saying, go to the link in the video description to find the photo that might be unpractical for you, or you may have to drag out your computer or your phone and look it up that way. I just think that's going to be a lot easier. I have had people request that in the past. I've done it for like classes. I usually do that in my, um, in my courses. Uh, but I thought, yeah, that's not really that as long as I can fit it so that like I've got my painting here and I got my palette here and I could put the photo there so that it's not covering up anything you need to see. Like as far as mixing colors and stuff, I, I want to get the most important stuff on the screen basically. And for me, I always want like more detail. Like when I'm watching a tutorial, it's like, I want to see, I really want to see what's going on. Um, so yeah, something, something new, something new I'm trying. I'm trying not to be such a lazy bum and do, <laughs> do better, get, uh, get better, better stuff out there for you. Uh, and something else that I really enjoyed this week was, um, was this painting here. I did this yesterday and I worked on the big polka dot table, which I painted last week. And the nice thing was that since it's so nice and glossy, when I was done this pastel painting, I could wipe up any of the dust and it was so much easier to clean than the rough table. And I'll just spin the camera around so you can see that because, uh, I just talked about it and you might not have seen last week's sat chat. And yeah, so I did polka dots. I flooded the table with paint, uh, put dabs of color and swirled it and made a polka dotty table. And it's nice and smooth because before I would just like randomly brayer paint on um, when it would get dirty and gross looking. And uh, then it made it like a really rough texture that my cat's hair would stick to. And uh, and it was not a good scene. I'd like, it was, it would hurt you if you like ran your arm against sticks. It was just like, you know, coarse sandpaper. Um, and it was very difficult to clean. So, uh, so yeah, it is working out just as well as I'd hoped. And since it's not cold here, I can work over there and be fine. Cause like in my little, my little sequestered area here, I can put a space heater on during the cold months. Um, I don't have to cause it's warm now cause summer has finally arrived or spring or whatever you want to call this weird warm season. That's very short that we have in Maine. Um, so this will be actually, this is up right now in critique club as a 72 minute lesson. So check that out if you want to paint along, if you're a member. I will have a time lapse of this on Sunday. And if you're curious about pastel and uh, you'd like to have some more beginner information, I do have, I put my soft pastel course. It's a uh, soft pastels for beginners. I put it 30% off. There's a link to that in the video description. The coupon code is pastel30 if you're not watching on the computer and you want to look up that course at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. The link in the video description will have the coupon code attached, but for whatever reason, if it doesn't say 30% off, just type in pastel 30 when you check out and that will take 30% off either the one-time purchase or the payment plan if you prefer. Um, I love pastels. I forgot how much I really loved working with them. And I think it's because I've been working over here in the winter because I can get a little warmer. Um, and when I'm doing pastels, I really want to spread out. I want to uh, have a bunch of trays of pastels out that I can grab from. So, there, that, that's, that's that. Gosh, this feels random as usual. Um, oh, so, you know, the, I was talking about the Girl Scout analogy a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. I don't know. The, the weeks just blur. This has been a blur. The last couple of months have just blurred together. Um, so I talked about the, uh, the saying that the Girl Scout instructor would, would say, um, and they would say, you know, tell us about your day. Uh, tell us the, the rose, the bud, and the thorn. So the rose was that painting right there. I uh, really liked it. The bud was um, getting out on the kayak, working my sketchbook, getting outside and painting, you know, so the bud is a thing that you're like hoping to bloom, you're looking forward to, stuff you're looking forward to, looking forward to painting outside. And the thorn is a thing that didn't go so well. So my thorn is actually a project I was working on today and it is, uh, this pepper. So, um, 
I picked up a pepper. I picked up a <laughs> picked up a pickled pepper. I picked up a pepper at the grocery store, and I thought it was really pretty because it was yellow, but it had these red stripes on it. Let me see if I can move this. So it's got this like striping, the striation on it, and it's called Aloha pepper. And I thought, well, that's pretty. Um, it was the same price as like regular bell peppers. So, um, so I bought it and I thought, well, I will paint it and then I will, um, I will eat it. I will put it in the salad. So I got, I was making my salad today and I put some, you know, cut up a piece of that pepper and put it in there. And I was arranging the leftover pieces artfully on my, on my cutting board here so I could bring it down here and do a still life of it. And I go to the other side of the kitchen to do something. I can't remember what. And I turn around and I was seeing Maisie munching on the pepper slices. <laughs> I'm like, Maisie, that's my still life. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, mom. Um, and so I'm like, oh, don't worry. That's fine. And, um, and I save the sticker. I'm like, oh, that's cool. It's got like a little, uh, like, a, like a tiki um, statue face on it with a little barcode in the mouth. And it's called an Aloha pepper. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That must come from Hawaii. That's so cool. And I'm looking at the sticker and it says the Netherlands on the side. I'm like, it's not even a legit Hawaiian pepper. It's a Netherlands. I didn't even know they grew peppers. Uh, I always think it looks so tropical, you know? We're getting our peppers from the Netherlands. That's quite a long ways for a pepper to travel. I guess, you know, actually to Maine, Hawaii is probably further away. But I thought that was so funny. That just made me laugh. But anyway, so I come down with my still life. I'm working over on the big table because I had so much fun working and painting over there yesterday. And, um, and keep in mind, I've got two good paint, three paintings I really liked under my belt in a row. That's kind of unheard of. I usually am like, you know, crabbing about something that I've painted and not happy with it. And I'm just disgusted. And I close my sketchbook and I stick it on the shelf and I don't want to see it again. Um, so typically, so you never know that with my sunny, <laughs> my sunny demeanor. I'm usually quite disgusted with a lot of the things that I make. Um, so I, I'm over there. I've got my Karen Dachwa. I'm like, I want to use my watercolor crayons. I haven't used them in a long time. They're a thing of beauty. I want to pull them out and use them. And uh, so I get all set up and I'm painting and I'm uh, about five minutes into the painting and I hear, mom, mom. And so Maisie was like, can I, can I take a shower? Um, Cause she was asking us, she was seeing if I was recording. Cause if somebody takes a shower then the water pump goes, it gets really loud down here, the furnace goes. Um, <clears throat> and so they try to not, you know, if they know I'm recording to, uh, to wait until I'm done recording. So I'm like, okay, I'll take a break. I'll go outside, sit in the sun, and I'll come back and I'll record. So I did that, came back. I was having a hard time getting into it anyway. Um, and I start recording again and then the water pump goes off for some unknown reason. I don't think any water got turned on, but anyway, it's the, you know, the pump that brings the water out of the well because we're in the country. And, uh, uh, and I'm like, man, I just, I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop the camera. I'll wait for that to stop. And then I'll, then I'll resume. Cause it was, it's all, it just seemed really loud to me today. Uh, maybe it's louder over there where I was standing. But anyway, so I start up again and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, because I'm, this was going to be like a narrated tutorial. Oh my gosh. What do we have for time? 17 minutes. I can't believe I've been talking about this random stuff for so long. Um, so, uh, so I'm painting and I'm talking and I'm just like, you know, this is, I realize that this is going to take me a lot longer than like half an hour. And, um, just that, you know, YouTube does not like long tutorials. Actually, YouTube's not really liking tutorials lately. And, um, and more on that in a minute. But, um, so I was like, you know what? I want to sit down. I don't want to stand. I'm feeling kind of discouraged. My painting's not coming out. I want to be comfy. I want to put something on to listen to. I want to put on a podcast or a YouTube video or a show or something. I'm just like, oh, I'm just, I just was, I couldn't get into the flow state basically is what it was. I could not get into the groove with that. Um, and all the starts and stops weren't helping. And so I sat over here and I worked on it some more. This is where we're at right now. Ran out of camera, ran out of film, we're not film, ran out of film, ran out of room on my memory card. And um, this is where we're at. I like the cutting board. That's about it. I'm hoping that this is one of these paintings where I come back tomorrow. And I'm like, well, that's not so bad. Hopefully that's the case. Although I'm laughing about the sticker that says the Netherlands on it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was feeling pretty, pretty cruddy about that painting until I read the sticker because I thought it was going to say Hawaii. So the Netherlands, and I found that hilarious. It's little things that amuse me. But if you can find those funny things in your day, then, then grab them, hold on to them, hold them tightly because we need the levity. We need, uh, we need some things to, to, uh, to make us, to make us giggle once in a while. So, oh yeah, so YouTube, so, um, YouTube does not like the long tutorials. 
it's frustrating because um, I know there's so many people that want to learn. I think people are having a hard time learning right now because it's, you know, life is so scattered and stressful and um, dealing with everything is, uh, has people not in that frame, not in that groove, that artsy groove, that groove you need to be able to settle down and get into and get lost in your art. And now is the time where people really need it. Um, so I want to put those tutorials out there, but I understand it's really hard to like buckle down and um, and and get to work and work on your artwork. Uh, so I totally get that. So I can understand why tutorials aren't really doing that well. But I also think that YouTube isn't really pushing them because I log on and I'm not seeing. I go to my sub feed first because I want to see the people I subscribe to. What a thought! Think you know? Wouldn't you think that people want to see the people they're subscribed to? I do. So that's where I go first and I watch the videos there that I want to see. Um, but I'm not seeing like on my homepage, I'm not seeing any tutorials recommended to me. I am seeing, um, I'm seeing a lot of news. I'm seeing, um, so a lot of podcasts actually, cause I do tend to, I listen to podcasts on my phone when I walk the dog, but I also listen to a lot on my, um, on my computer just cause it's convenient. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't feel like I'm seeing the variety. I want to see delightful projects that spark my creativity and I'm not seeing that. So I know other YouTubers out there are putting these tutorials out and we're not seeing them and that's a shame. So if you are a crafty YouTuber and you're having a hard time getting your stuff seen, it is across the board. Um, I don't know what to tell you. And I've actually had three people email me this week, three lovely awesome people who are also creator makers artists creators that that you know they're looking for some some tips and career advice and I'm and I advice on YouTube and I'm like you know if I knew I would be <laughs> I would be doing it. <laughs> you know, um, I've definitely seen a decline in the how-to realm over the last couple of years, uh, the last three years especially, but it could be that my channel's 10 years old and it does seem like YouTube channels, when they hit about year seven, they start to decline. Um, so I figured I'd jump, jump the shark, I guess, is to coin a phrase from Happy Days. Uh, you know, I jumped the shark. It's all downhill from here. Um, so it could be that. I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure maybe my ideas were fresher when I started or more interesting or more, you know, maybe they cast a wider net or people are just sick of me and they moved on and that's fine. You know, hey, can't blame them. Um, but yeah, but I'm noticing this on other people's channels too. So I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I just think that, and I also think that YouTube is not, uh, not promoting uh, the how-to content that much. I think part of it uh, is because when people watch a how-to video, a lot of times they get off the computer and they go do the thing they just looked up on how to do. So, um, you know, and the funny thing is I haven't really been seeing a lot of sourdough tutorials lately, and that's something I was watching some videos on, probably because I watched a sourdough video and then I went and made my sourdough bread, or did whatever I needed to learn how to do because I was completely, like, lost and I needed to find a video on it. So they're probably like, well, geez, that video made her leave YouTube. We don't want to show that because we want to keep those eyeballs glued onto our platform. That's what all the social media is about. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to tell, what to tell anybody. Um, I think the best advice I could give as far as, uh, as succeeding as an artist, my first advice would be if you think you want to be an artist is to ask yourself if there's anything that you could do and be reasonably happy with that is a more secure path. I would honestly say do that and do your art for fun. You know, if you have a, like, let's, if you have a knack for numbers and you love math, you know, Go do something in mathematics, be an accountant, be a bookkeeper, be something that is secure, that, you know, satisfies that need, that financial need, and then do your art for fun and not, and then you won't have the stress of relying on it. Now, I am not a very balanced person. I, you know, um, I love the fact that I can make a living as an artist, but it's not always very reliable and it can be very, um, very, uh, uh, what's the word? The opposite of reliable, unreliable, um, fickle it can be very fickle. So, um, yeah, so my advice would be no matter, I guess, no matter what you're going to do would be to get good at it. Always try to get better at it. Um, be kind to everyone. Um, treat people with respect, uh, and Fess up when you make a mistake because we're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. The The minute you drop the ball and you mess up, own it. You will get more respect from your clients. You know, it's like I missed a deadline once. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Completely my fault. What can I do? You know, don't don't pass the buck. Don't say, oh, I didn't write it in my calendar. I didn't do this, you know, or I didn't realize you meant this or that. No, no. Own it and, um, you know, take responsibility 
and do better next time and just constantly try to do better no matter what you're going to do in life my um my parents have a have a um they had a uh, contracting company and then they had a hardware store you know that's always been their philosophy that's what they instilled in us and i think it's it's advice that will go across so many levels because there's so many people in in the world that just won't do what they say they're going to do uh they don't show up on time they flake out if you can be somebody that doesn't do that you can succeed in anything whether it be art music um accountancy whatever uh just just show up be responsible be kind uh, treat people with respect and you will do well. Um, so I guess that's my advice. I don't know how it relates to YouTube. I haven't got that figured out after 10 years. I don't have it figured out. I'm just here because it's fun and I get to connect with my community and hopefully spread a little positivity and light because boy, that seems to be what the world is lacking. There, It's lacking a little, a little happy and I'm not qualified to do a lot of things, but I think I can bring a little joy um, and I can teach people how to paint. Um, so bloom where you're planted people you know go with your strengths and um add good to the world because there's a lot of people adding bad to the world and um you know do your part to make it a little better i think yeah that's that's uh that's about all i have for this week i think um i hope you're having a good week i hope you're finding some joy in every day and um I will try to remember to put links to everything. I'll make a note as soon as I'm done recording so that I can hopefully get everything in the video description and not forget. But if I do, just leave me a comment and I will, um, I'll pop it right in there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you joining me for this sat chat and um, I'll chat with you in the comments some more. See you later. Happy crafting. Bye.